In this video I'm going to show you how to create an interactive drum kit in Adobe Flash. So basically all the user has to do is click on any piece of the drum kit and they will hear a sound. I'll just take my headphones off for a moment so you can have a listen to how this works. Watch as I click on the drums, a sound should be played. There we go, so I'm not much of a drummer. That's basically how it works, so it's quite a simple um, program to use. We'll begin today by opening up Adobe Flash and making ourselves an ActionScript 3.0 file. And we're going to import all the bits and pieces we need to make this drum kit work. So we'll go to the File menu, go down to Import and choose Import to Library. Now, just make sure that you've got all files selected here, so you can see all the different types of files that we want to bring in. And what I do want to bring in is all the sounds of the drums. And I'll click on open once I've selected all those sounds and there they all are in my library panel now. The one other thing I need to import to my library is the actual picture of the drum kit itself. Okay, and it looks something like that. That's what we're going to start with today. I'm going to actually pick that up from my library and just drag it and drop it onto my stage. I'm just going to position it roughly in the center of the page. I'll rename that layer as well to drum kit and just lock it into place. We're not going to touch that drum kit anymore. It's just going to sit there in the background, so I will lock it into place. On top of that, I'm going to press the new layer button, and I'll make a new layer. It's going to be called Hi-Hat. Okay, and as you can see here, one of our symbols is called the Hi-Hat symbol. So what I'm going to do is turn this into a button so that when we click on that, it plays the sound of the Hi-Hat symbol. So, I'm going to go over to my oval tool here in my toolbox. From my properties I'm just going to choose any old fill color, so a nice bright green will do. Hovering over the middle of the hi-hat I'm going to hold the Alt and the Shift key at the same time and just click and drag out until I get a circle that fills pretty much all of that hi-hat symbol up. It doesn't have to be exactly spot on but pretty close is what you're looking for. Now using my selection tool, the black arrow, I'm going to click on that circle I'm going to go up to my Modify menu and choose Convert to Symbol, or just press F8 for the shortcut. The name of the symbol will be called Hi-Hat, and its type will be Button. Okay, I've got my registration point in the middle, but it doesn't really matter where the rego point is for this uh, tutorial. So click on OK, and you'll see that you get a blue box around your circle now. And that is now converted into a button. So what I'm going to do next is double click on this button and you just watch down the bottom here and watch my timeline change. It's now changed into the button timeline. And there's four states your button can have. The up state, so when your button's sitting there, that's what it's going to look like. When you hover over your button, you can choose what it looks like. When you press down on your button, you can choose what happens. And there's also the hit area. We just want to work with the down state in this side of this button. So under the word down, just click in that box, and I want you to press F6 to insert a keyframe. So when we press down on this button, what we want to do is play a sound. So from my library, I'm going to find my hi-hat sound, there it is there, and just drag it and drop it anywhere on the stage. And you will see now that an orange line has appeared through my timeline. That's showing that when we press down, on this green circle, that little sound wave there is going to be played. So if I go back now to my original scene and just press Control Enter to test my movie out, I'll take my headphones off again and hopefully when I press this button that you hear the sound of the symbol being played. So let's have a listen. So, that sounded pretty good. The issue we've got is this ugly green circle that's sitting on top of my drum kit. What I can actually do is make that invisible, so when we actually run the um, little animation, we won't see that circle, but it will still be there playing the sound for us. So, what we need to do is just go back to our Properties panel over here, and with this circle still selected, go to the Color Effect panel, change the style to Alpha, and make sure your Alpha is set to 0%. If that 100%, it's going to be fully visible, but as you drag that lever down, it will become transparent, and at 0%, it'll be completely invisible. OK, 
Okay, so that's got our hi hat symbol working. It's still there. Okay, you can see it's still there when we click on it, but it's just invisible. But it'll still play the sound when we click on it. So I'm going to lock that layer. I'll make another new layer now and I'll call it Crash. That's going to be for our Crash symbol. We're going to do the same thing. I'll pick up my oval tool, start in the middle and hold Alt and Shift. Just click and drag out. Using my selection tool, I'll pick that up, convert it to a symbol and call it Crash. Making sure it's a button. From here I'll double click on it, go to the down state and press F6. From my library, I'm going to find the crash sound and just drag it somewhere onto my stage. See the orange little sound wave there has appeared, so I know it's all good. I'll now go back to my original scene. I'll just click on this circle, go to its properties, and change its color effect to alpha and make sure it's set to 0%. Okay, I'll press Control Enter one more time and just test that. Have another listen. Okay, so that's working pretty well. I've got the hi hat and the crash symbol working. I'll just close that off again. Now I might do these two drums here because we've got a bit of an issue with them. You can see that the symbol actually overlaps these two drums. So I'll show you what to do when we have this issue. I'm going to go back to my circle here. Um, I'll lock the crash layer. I'll make another new layer called snare. We might do the snare drum next. And I'm going to start in the middle of the snare drum, hold Alt and Shift, and simply click and drag out till I get a circle that goes over the top of the snare drum. I'll click on that circle. I'll convert it to a symbol. I'll call it snare and make sure it's a button. Click OK. I'll do the same as usual. I'll go to the down state. Press F6 to put a keyframe in. And back in my library, I'll find the sound of the snare drum. There it is, and just drop it onto my stage. Now, what I want to do is get this circle beneath the hi-hat. And that's quite simple to do. All I need to do is make sure the hi-hat is on top of my layers panel and the snare is below it. Okay, that way I'll be able to play the hi-hat that overlaps the snare. I'll just make that invisible actually so we can see what's happening. Change my color effect down to 0% there, the alpha to 0%. So now that circle that was on top of the snare is below the circle that was on top of the hi-hat. So I'll test this one more time. And I'll just take my headphones off so you can hear what's happening again. You'll notice that when I press the snare drum, I've got the sound playing. As I hover over where it overlaps, it should play the hi-hat. Okay, and that's simply because the hi-hat is on top of my layers panel. Okay, so whatever's on top will appear on top in the animation. The snare drum needs to be below the hi-hat symbol. Let's do the same thing for the tom one. I'll grab my circle. Just lock that snare layer and make another new layer. This time it's got to be below the crash symbol. So I'll drag this layer below the crash symbol and I'll call it Tom1. Using my circle now, I'll hold Alt and Shift, click and drag out and draw my Tom1 drum. I'll grab my black arrow, click on the circle, convert it to a symbol. I'll call it Tom1, make sure it's a button, click OK. Double click on it, F6 on the down state, back in my library, get the sound of Tom 1, drop it onto the stage. Okay, finally back to properties and I'll change the color effect to alpha and make sure it's 0%. So that's those four items all done. There's a tricky one in the bottom here called the kick. Okay, it's the kick drum, the big one, the big orange one at the bottom there. The way I'm going to do that is with a rectangle. Okay, so I'll lock Tom 1. Make a new layer called Kick. And because this is on the bottom of everything, I'm going to make sure my Kick layer is just below everything else, but still above the drum kit, which is our original layer. Okay, so on the Kick drum layer, I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to guess where it starts. I'm just going to go over, draw it about that big. Okay, from there, I'll grab my black arrow and click on it. I'll convert it to a symbol and call it Kick. Make sure it's a button. Click OK. Double click on that button. 
head to the down state, press F6, and just bring in the sound of your kick drum. So there's my kick drum sound. Drag it onto the stage and go back. Okay, and I just need to change that color effect so that the alpha is set to zero. Okay, so let's just test this out. I want to see that these four drums and cymbals are working as well as the kick drum. Okay, I'll just take the headphones off again. so it seems like everything's working well there okay I'll just finish off very quickly you can watch how I do this I won't talk too much about how I finish this off because you should know how to do it by now just make sure that you keep adding new layers in every time you want to make a new sound so layer 7 will be Tom 2 I'm using my oval tool I'll draw on circle for Tom 2 Convert it to a symbol, Tom 2, it's a button. And we'll bring in the sound, Tom 2. Oops, that didn't quite drag on, I'll try that again. There we go, that's got it that time. Color effect, alpha 0%. Okay, that's Tom 2 all done. All right, Tom 3 comes below. Tom 2, so when I make a new layer here, it needs to be below Tom 2. We'll call that Tom 3. And we'll click on it, modify, convert it to a symbol, call it Tom 3. It will be a button again, double click on it, go to the down state and press F6, drag on the Tom 3 sound. We'll go back, change the color effect from the properties box, change the alpha to zero. Okay, we don't have a Tom 4 sound in this kit, so what I'm going to do with that is simply rub it out. So I'm going to lock all my layers, but unlock my drum kit. Now to rub that out, I first need to right click on that drum kit and break it apart. Just press Control B for the shortcut. I can then pick up my, where have we got it, there's the eraser down the bottom there, and simply rub over the top of it, and that will start to rub that drum kit out. Just be careful when you get near Tom 3 there. Okay, so that's got rid of that. We have to lock that layer again. So we've nearly got everything in now. We've got the hi-hat, the snare, Tom 1, 2, and 3, the kick, the crash, it leaves us with the ride symbol. It's pretty much on top of everything, so let's go up the top, make a new layer called Ride, and we'll draw on the Ride symbol. Starting in the middle, hold Alt and Shift. A little bit off, but it's okay. Convert that to a symbol called Ride. Double click it, go to the down state, press F6, and drag on the sound of the Ride symbol. Alrighty. So we'll turn that invisible, we're changing the alpha to 0%, we've pretty much got our drum kit finished. Okay, so let's test this out and we'll see if we've got all the sounds working as intended. Headphones off, having a listen. Beautiful. Okay, so that's sounding pretty good. Close that off now, I might just zoom out a little bit here to say 90%, can I see all of my stage? Not quite, I'll go back to about 75%. See, I've got a little bit of extra room down the bottom here. Uh, what I might do is just press, well, I'll unlock everything first and press Control A just to highlight everything. You can see that drum kit picture in the background there has had a bit rubbed out of it. Okay, so we're going to be best if we leave our background as white. You might want to put some text in. So grab your text tool if you like, add in a layer, let's call it text. And maybe you can tell the user what they have to do to play this drum kit. So click on the drums to hear them being played. Now I'll need to obviously change the color of that text. I'll change the font, I'll up the size a little bit. Go to paragraph options here and center it. 
So let's click on the drums to hear them being played. Okay. So that's basically how we make our drum kit app. It's fairly simple. Uh, when you're done, just make sure you add a file and save it as an FLA file. When you finish, you can press Control Enter to publish it and test it all out. Okay, have fun doing that.